This video is brought to you by Patreon. Join Jay Ziagi's Patreon today for access to exclusive Telegram Patreon chats and perks. Studio monitors for me have been a long love and hate relationship. Let me explain why. Some of you may know that I worked in some studios in the past. And as someone who has studio experience, I really do appreciate the accuracy the current day studio monitors provide. But my personal audio preference is not a flat, accurate, or analytical sound when it comes to my personal enjoyment in my dedicated listening room meant for entertainment and listening pleasure. But what if I told you that the new Atom Audio A8H provides both accuracy and listening pleasure all in a single package? This is the new $3,000 per pair Atom Audio A8H Studio Monitors. It's a three-way active loudspeaker with a 8-inch multi-layer mineral fiber woofer for the low frequencies, 3.5-inch mid-woofer for the mid-range, and the Atom Audio signature handmade AMT tweeter that Atom calls XART. The orientation of the speakers allow it to have it in two different orientations, either vertically or horizontally. It is designed so that you can unscrew the waveguide here and turn it around. The Atom Audio logo should always be an indicator whether you have it in the correct orientation. It should always read horizontally. The HPS waveguide for the tweeter is designed to minimize the narrowing directivity of the tweeter or what we call often beaming behavior where the high frequencies tend to become extremely directional. Single port in the front and the drivers all have their own internal built-in and separate amplifiers driving it. Uh, the tweeter is powered by a 15 watt class AB amplification. The midwoofer is powered by a 55 watt class AB amplification. And the bass driver is powered by a 200 watt class D amplification. On the back, it has both XLR and RCA inputs, of course. XLR is recommended for studio settings or when running long lengths of cables. I personally use Mogami Gold Standard XLR cables. These are very good studio grade cables and I will link them below for you to check out. Aside from the standard AC plug, power switch, and volume control dial of each channel, there are various very different interesting and useful settings on the back that change the sound of the speaker, but more on that in the later part of this video. The speakers are constructed from MDF with vinyl wrap and painted front baffles, giving it, giving it a nice sleek studio look. Uh, the front baffle also has slight angles on the both sides to help with baffle diffraction, but also to add character to the rest uh, of the rather plain looking box. Whether you are a studio engineer or looking for a set of studio speakers on your desk or stereo, to understand why Atom A8H is such an interesting design with its many different settings and how it applies to us, we need to talk about what makes a studio monitor and how they differ from hi-fi or audiophile speakers meant for our homes. According to Atom Audio, the A8H was designed for absolute accuracy and transparency for a revealing and natural, neutral sound needed in professional studio settings. Now, all studio monitors are not made equal, nor neutral. That's right, many of the famous studio monitors like the all-time famous Yamaha NS10 and its variants were never neutral or accurate speakers. Yet, it made its way to many studios and got the appreciation and love of many studio engineers. This is just one example and there are many examples. In fact, one can argue that there are more colored not very neutral speakers in more studios than neutral speakers. You may find this information odd in 2023 or just coming from a consumer perspective. After all, wouldn't an esteemed studio professional not want to have the most accurate and neutral presentation to monitor their work? Well, there are two possible reasons for this and I'm going to give you both of them and you can make your own conclusion. First reason is my own reason as well as what many studio engineers express to me and it may be controversial as it goes against the classic beliefs about studio monitors or more accurately how they should perform. It is my belief that it's not the neutrality that is the most important in a studio monitor but the familiarity factor. 
Most studio engineers would have worked or have had close interactions with the NS10, hence know the speaker's characteristics very well, which shortens their work turnaround time, not to mention that in case of successful studio monitors like the NS10, it was found in many studios and therefore, if the engineer was in a new studio and needed to continue their previous work, they wouldn't need to relearn or get adjusted. Having personally been editing videos and also audio before, I can attest that I would rather work with familiar gear rather than needing to relearn or readjust every time. Even if the gear is better in overall performance, it's just kind of like working with the power tools you know very well versus a new set of power tools that promises better performance. The new set of power tools may be objectively better, but if you were handed an important job that required you to finish fast with no room for mistakes, it would be very nerve wracking to go with the tool tools that's new to you that you have never used before with different features and functions. If one knows that they can get the job done in time and they have done it zillion times before with their older familiar tools, that's probably the smarter choice until they decide to learn the new tools on their own time before using them on an important project. The second reason is more or less um, confusing, at least to me. Many dissected famous studio monitors to find out why they were so widely preferred in studios despite the not very neutral frequency responses. It either has terrible frequency response, but great face or distortion characteristics, this and that. There are many reasons that vary from speakers to speaker. And it may very much be true that these characteristics had a part in these speakers success, but there is not much of a commonality in what made these the choice in studios. With all this being said, in 2023, it isn't hard to find a neutral studio monitor. And that has become kind of the norm in what a studio monitor should do. And I honestly don't think it's a bad thing. I actually think it's a pretty good thing. But I thought I would explain a little bit more to not give you the misconception that neutrality or measured performance is the most important thing when it comes to studio monitors. But anyways, talking about the measured performance, let's take a look at the measurements that I took. Reported frequency response is from 34 Hertz to 41 kilohertz, 34 Hertz being the F3 value or the plus minus three dB point. Honestly, very impressive measured performance for a three-way speaker that isn't huge. I was impressed with how low the bass went down both in measurements I took and subjective listening sessions. The response I just showed you is the pure setting of the Atom Audio. It is meant to be the most neutral and analytical setting meant for dissecting tracks and a more suitable setting for work in studio settings, according to Atom Audio. Many associate this studio sound to be revealing, analytical in nature, and sometimes that isn't the best for pleasure listening. As weird as that may sound, we all have different preferences for different sound characteristics and what we find or associate with quality in the sound we hear. Personally, I didn't find the sound of the pure setting of the Atom Audio to be overly analytical or unpleasant to listen to. In fact, I found it very musical and enjoyable. It isn't bright or too lean like some studio monitors I have heard and owned in the past, and it and initially, one might find their more lean or brighter studio monitors to be more revealing of the details in the music, but you know, the Atom Audio is just as revealing without the bright or overly lean analytical feel to the sound. The bass is fairly strong, but without any muddiness or boominess. It is quite controlled, textured, and punchy. I find this speaker pretty darn dynamic and don't feel the need for a subwoofer as it easily extends down to 30 Hertz or lower with room gain and placement without a problem. The mid-range is balanced and neutral. Instruments have a good body and weight to the sound with good tonality. The highs are extended with great micro details. Great balance and not fatiguing over long listening sessions whatsoever. The one thing I find extraordinary in the speaker is the fact that it is using three different drivers, yet it is very coherent as if all the sound is coming from a single point source like a coaxial driver. 
Some of you may remember that I used to use the Kef LS50 Meta speakers on my desk because of this characteristic of a dual concentric driver design. I get the similar effect here in both the seamless integration of the drivers as well as the phase coherency with the Atom Audio A8H despite using three different drivers. Another thing I appreciate about this as a studio monitor, but also just general listening is the fact that the center image or the phantom center stays intact even when I move around. Like when I physically move further to the right or to the left, or just walking around the room, the phantom center just stays there. It seems to have really good dispersion or off axis characteristics that allow for this amazing imaging and separation in the music, even with a giant monitor in the middle. It has reasonably good sound staging, but everything is kept somewhat in between the two loudspeakers. I often love the sound of tube amplifiers, as some of you may know, or speakers that just sound like it's coming from everywhere in a holographic fashion, right? But the Atom Audio being a studio monitor keeps the soundstage within the plane of each speaker, more or less. It doesn't stretch as far as what I am used to for entertainment or pleasured listening sessions. But the soundstage certainly isn't too small, even to my standard and especially on a desk. Especially the layering and the depth of the soundstage is something I truly appreciate about this speaker. Like the singer and the instruments never seem crowded and the depth stretches past my screen in the middle and sometimes even deeper than the wall behind the screen. What you do get in space though, and why I personally feel like this is an excellent studio monitor, is the nuance, detail, and all the perfectly placed instruments within the soundstage given. It is very easy to pick out instruments and everything in the track with pinpoint accuracy. Overall, I find the pure setting on the Atom Audio to be great for editing work, or when I require the sound to be neutral, but also I find it quite pleasant for just normal day-to-day -day music or movies on my desk or in my listening entertainment room. Now, that's not all. The Atom Audio has a setting called UNR. The UNR is more of a fun tuning meant for pleasure and less accuracy. Looking at my set of measurements, we can see that it has substantial increase in bass and a bit on the treble. When I switch from pure, and to the, NR, to the UNR setting, the change is instant and what I immediately notice is that the bass has increased. I still remember when I first switched to the UNR setting, I went, whoa, the bass is increased and it's just so much fun. What I'm surprised by is that there is no boominess or muddiness even with the bass increase. It is so very well controlled and it is just pleasant, especially if you are a bass head or someone who just likes a little bit more dynamic bass and extension. This is a killer setting. The treble, I honestly don't notice as much of a change, but I do feel that it is slightly more forward, but it isn't bright still, and I find it still pretty non-fatiguing to listen to, even with modern recordings. The thing I find with both the pure and UNR tuning of the speaker is that while it's revealing, it doesn't totally destroy poor recordings or make it unlistenable. While better recordings truly do stand out and sound better. I found it surprising and not at the same time that the Atom Audio A8H has an AMT tweeter but doesn't sound typical of other AMT tweeter designs I have heard. It's not as extended or airy like some AMT tweeter designs like Elac Vela's, nor is it lean and snappy fast sounding like some others. But it also doesn't surprise me because Atom Audio speakers I have tested in the past also had similar characteristics. What the Atom Audio does have with their AMT tweeter is great microdynamics and detail, but with an overall full sound that fills up the room nicely without fatigue from all the details being thrown at your face. It's interesting because I am used to revealing studio monitors just ripping apart poor qualities in the tracks but I didn't find that with the Atom Audio. It lets me hear the poor qualities if it is there, but it doesn't make it unlistenable or exaggerate any fault in the tracks. I want to quickly note here that all the sound I am describing is pretty much impressions for both near field listening on my desk as well as in my dedicated listening room. 
There are times where speakers sound much different in different applications, but I didn't find that to be the case with the Atom Audio A8H, as the sound profile and the presentation was very similar. However, the setup process is a little different. For my near field setup, I am using it on a fairly tall stand with isoacoustic bass added to further isolate it from the vibrations. I will link down all the stuff I am using for my near field setup if you're interested that I use with the Atom Audio, including the stands and some other options. It is also placed fairly close to the wall and towed in heavily directly towards my ears for maximum on axis response and accuracy on my desktop setup. For stereo setups, I mostly prefer the UNR setting as it gave a more fuller base in a larger space and me sitting further away from the speakers also had something to do with that. Also, it has to do with the fact that I had the speakers further away from the wall behind the speakers to gain more depth in the soundstage. I also did not have the speakers heavily towed in like I did in the near field setup as it gave me more width in soundstage in stereo settings, but also because I was sitting further away, it, instead of having it slightly towed in, I had it you know, towed in a little bit more. Either way, the sound is pretty much similar, but with better depth and soundstage and less space in a listening room setting. Now, when I say less space, I mean only relative to the near field situation as the bass is still very strong and satisfying, especially with the UNR setting. You may also notice that I have them vertically instead of horizontally, and this was simply for aesthetics and because of the lower height of the stands that I'm using in my stereo setup. I will link to all the stuff used with the Atom Audio in my dedicated listening room as well in the description box below. Now on the back, you can also see various settings labeled bass, desk, presence, and treble. These are what Atom Audio calls room adaptation settings, which is essentially EQ. And they have a set of recommendation settings depending on each scenario, but keep in mind that every room and setup is different, and so these settings should be only used as a good starting point. Further adjustments should be made either with your ears or measurement tools if accuracy is vital. Now it also comes with a software along with your five year warranty when you register your Atom Audio product on My Atom Audio. It's called the A Control and this software allows you to control your speaker settings that's on the back of the speaker so that you don't have to look at the back of the speaker every time you want to change something. It's really convenient. The only thing is that you do have to connect both speakers with an ethernet cable and if you are on Windows, uh, like myself, you need to download Bonjo. There are two more calibration settings if you want to go further in depth in making the speakers sound the way you want or for ultimate accuracy. Both settings will change the setting from the pure or UNR setting to the EXT setting on the back of the speakers when you activate these other two EQs. First is the advanced EQ setting where you can essentially do the EQ yourself or you can use the sound ID preference by Sonarworks to calibrate the speakers by measuring the in-room response and then correcting it and then implementing it into the software, kind of like calibrating a TV. So whether it is for ultimate accuracy or listening pleasure adjustments at a beginner level or advanced level, the Atom Audio A8H is flexible and easy to work with for the most part. And they do have a tutorial video on their website. There is still a caveat that I find in almost all active or power speakers, and that is the fact that in a very quiet room when nothing is playing, I hear very small hissing noises coming from the speakers. I'm sure some of you guys know what I'm talking about. This is actually something I noticed on almost every active or power speaker, and that noise is still there with the A8H, but the noise is the quietest and it seems to be the most prominent if I leave the speakers on for a long period of time. But nevertheless, it is still there and not a huge big, huge problem or a big deal. The noise goes away when playing anything on the monitor, but it's something to be noted. So that's pretty much it from me and I hope this video was helpful and entertaining. If it was, please leave this video a thumbs up as it helps me out greatly and it doesn't cost you anything. Also, make sure to subscribe for more future videos on audio just like this, and I'll see you all on the next one. Until next time.